Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls are doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out the top right eye for even more links. Also check out the link for my patron down in the description if you want to support me that way. Otherwise sharing these videos really does help me out as well. Uh, but if you don't want to do any of that, please keep watching. So today's video is going to be about just finalizing some more framework stuff before we create the player um, and to do that we have our update and render function but what do they do right now literally nothing but print out a lol and we don't like that we have a few things we have to do uh, we have to work with something called an event for our window and events are usually all kinds of things uh, that the window picks up it can pick up a key press it can pick up a close command it can pick up a minimize command anything you can think of it picks up but we do that in a little container called sf event event i usually call it ev once you do create an ev uh, what you want to do here in the update is to make a little comment and say polling window events and this is something that's really important uh, because your window will always you always want to pick up what events are being pulled from the window. The way you do that is you write this window dot pull event into your EV EV variable. Once that's done, this basically says, okay, keep getting events from the window and put them into the EV. And that way we can check this EV variable and see what events were called. And the way you do that is if this ev dot type equals sf event closed for example so say we were to close our window or press the close button like the little x on our window we want to close the window actually really close it so that way you can get that close button event and you can close the window otherwise it won't close it, it will just press the button but it, nothing will happen it's just a basic button with an x on it doesn't really mean close for the computer in that sense but once you catch it and you tell it to close it will so that way you can work with it and then also you want to do else if this ev dot type equals sf event key pressed so we want to check for a key press and if there is a key press we also want to check if this ev.key.code equals sf keyboard escape now there's two checks happening in here the first one is of course we're checking if a key is pressed and if it is we're checking if the key code has been set so if a key is ever pressed the code will be set to escape and once that is done, we want to also close the window. Boom. All, all you want to do. Boom. And this is on top of update here. So you might want to do this in render as well. You can decide. I do it in update. It doesn't really matter for me. Once you do it, you will be able to close your game from that little X button. Or if you run it and you press escape, it should pick that escape command up here and close it. Just like it did for me right now. Am I recording right now, bro? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Good job, guys. Really proud of you for now. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to get all these things as well. Understand really what they're doing. It can be tough sometimes, but for now, we're still on the simple part here. In the render, I want to do a clear. Clear. So if this is the first time you're working with SFML, hopefully you have watched the other series on the tutorials and the uh, other games I've made here. I won't explain SFML as in detail in this series in this mini series as i would in the tutorial series but still i'll try so what we're doing here the way you render something in a game is you clear the window of the old stuff and you render a bunch of new stuff here and then you display that frame and once that frame has been displayed you do it all over again with all new data that's the way we're doing it so you want to have a clear in the top and you want to have a display at the bottom always have it like that and then draw or render uh, render game in between clear it render everything display it clear it render display and the way you do it is update is going to update your player's position for example so the old position will be rendered and the next frame a new position will be rendered and so on 
but that's good now we have all the basics in here uh, you could do a sf clear sf color red if you wanted to if you want to clear it in a different color the default is black so if i run this you'll see a red red window here hopefully and if i you can do any color you want here basically but we'll keep it at black because black is default now once that is done you have all your stuff ready to be rendering stuff you want to go to your source files here right click and add a new class and call it player and once you have your player done you don't have to click in virtual destructor again i always do by default uh, private so once you have your private sorry about this oh man a fat finger and everything today i'm sick guys i've had corona really had corona i'm not even joking so I have, i've been sick for about two weeks and it's just just started to get better so that feels good okay so it automatically included the stdfx for me because in the last video we linked and created a a uh, pre-compiled header and it automatically adds that for you in the project i like that about visual studio so thank you very much visual, visual studio that was very appreciated once you have your player done here we're going to create a sf sprite and just call it sprite you don't have to call it anything else we'll have a sprite sf texture texture sheet good so we'll have two things that we're going to animate it we're going to animate the player depending on how we're moving and i want to stress one thing in this series is that usually when i do this i use components it's a very easy system to add components to an object and then make it different so what i usually do is i have an animation component a movement component and link those together to make it really nice and dynamic but in this scenario in this little game we're going to do everything in one class and this is probably how do you do it in a school project anyway so you'll have everything animating in player and also updating and moving and all that stuff so that's good we have a few basic things here we're not going to be really going ham on the animation right away we're going to be rendering the player first of all so in your public section here any function section and do a void update and a void render but this time in the render i want you to do a sf render target reference target like that and once that's done you're good to go update can stay the way it is and also define these two functions while you're at it good now we have our update we have our everything our sprite has not been initialized we we'll want to do a void init sprite like that void first of all void init texture as well okay so very simple things go ahead and define these and we have these private because we'll just be using these inside our player class so now we have somewhat of a player class in the cpp of course of course before you go anywhere i want you to call these here init texture this init sprite good good guys we're gonna have a few sections here as well animation movement and then maybe you have some core values core here maybe like hp and all these things so we'll section it up in the player class and have it animate and all that so let's see was i even recording yes good once you have that set up run it just make sure to run the game once again just to check that everything is working that's good we have a black screen good next step is going to be to go into the player and say render this sprite we're going to render it to target draw this sprite what you could do as well is make player a sf drawable but we're not going to do that i don't like doing that it just makes a lot more sense for me i like this a lot more and we're going to keep it this way the update will stay as it is now in the game we're going to need a few more framework things we're going to go ahead into the function section in game.h we're going to create a void update player okay and that is going to allow us to contain all the player updates to one function go to your game cpp and you'll see that function created here but of course we don't have a player so i'm going to create a player for myself right about here player player 
good and of course we need to include player as well in include player and i'm not adding this to the pre-compiled header because sometimes you might get a circular dependency adding your own sorry about that adding your own uh, custom objects to the pre-compiled header so don't always do that if you have something that might have a circular dependency like in when you're working with inheritance you don't want to do it um so but just keep it in here game.h and create a player make it a pointer don't forget to make it a little pointer here and then we're gonna do a void in it player and this step is gonna actually create the player for us once you define this go to that cpp file game.cpp and create your player here this player equals new player boom and of course, as you guessed, we'll be adding a bunch of things in here later, like a texture file and all that. Uh, but for now, we'll just keep it like this. Don't forget to call it this init player below window. Okay, it's good to so keep the order is important. All right, you'll see that I keep the order everywhere. And it's very nice. And in the destructor for game, delete player. Delete this player and I'm not using a smart pointer or a unique pointer or anything here I'm using a raw pointer and the reason I'm doing this so I don't get a lot of questions later is because I want to teach you the raw pointer way Okay, this is this way you'll learn how to work with The memory really at the bottom the core. All right, so I want you to just learn that we'll go do things with smart pointers as well But just keep just learn this as well. It's good for you to know So go ahead and do that and then once you call it in here, you'll have a new player created. We have our update. Of course, go back to your game.cpp. I don't want to jump around too much. Remember the update player function we created? Well, I'm going to do this player update in here. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And I'm going to call that function in my update function in game right here. Okay. Very simple. And as you guessed that we'll create a render for player as well very soon in the next video, because then I'll have some textures and stuff ready for you to render. But at least the update part is fine. Just run it once before we end this and you'll see that everything was created. Everything is fine and you're good to go. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I'm sick. You can't really hear me that well, probably. But check out the description box. Drop a like, subscribe. Check out the top right eye. All the links, all that stuff. And thanks for the support. All right. So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.